everyone, how's it all going? Back today with another episode of Healthy Takeaway Choices. So in this series, I will go through different cuisines and let you know which are the better options for lower calorie and lower fat choices when it comes to eating takeaways or eating in a cuisine's a restaurant. Now when it comes to takeaways eaten at home and especially with chain restaurants such as McDonald's, um, Noodle Box and Nando's, you can simply go onto their website, look at their nutritional information, weigh the food on a set of scales and determine exactly how much calories and food you're eating. But when it comes to eating out or getting takeaways from an unknown restaurant with no nutritional information, it can be really difficult trying to find which foods are the best to go for, for a lot lower calorie, high protein, and lower fat choice. Anyway, on to the third cuisine of this series, and this was suggested by Reese Mant, so thank you Reese for your suggestion. We're going to be covering Japanese. Now the Japanese cuisine is based heavily on soy, rice, fish, and vegetables. And while this does sound all very healthy, and there are a lot of foods in the Japanese cuisine that are very healthy, there are also some secret hidden traps of high fat frying within the Japanese cuisine. Now, for the breakdown of the Japanese cuisine. Now, when it comes to entrees, opting for a seaweed salad or a miso soup are a brilliant idea. Although they are fairly high in sodium, they are very low in calories and also very filling before you get into your main meal. Now, try to avoid the dumplings or the tofu dishes as some of them are either fried or very high in fat and they can easily rack up calories before even hitting the main meal. We'll quickly dive into sushi and sashimi before the main meal as well. Now, both are great choices, sashimi especially because sashimi is actually the version of sushi that has either less or no rice in it. So that avoids the high carbs of the white rice and the sticky white rice especially. So sashimi over sushi is a great option, but both are still very good options. Try to avoid the fried chicken and fried meats in sushi as they do pack a lot more fat on top of the carb. Now going for a fried chicken dish can actually bring one simple sushi roll over 500 calories and that is not extremely filling for one sushi roll and that is a lot of calories for such little food. So try and offer a shrimp and mushroom sushi roll which is good for someone feeling like a bit of seafood or meat or go for a shiitake mushroom sushi roll which is also great for vegetarians. When it comes to mains, Japanese have a fairly low calorie and they have a quite an array of different cooking styles that they use. The three main ones being steaming, poaching and grilling, which are all great for eliminating all those added fats and unhealthy oils during the cooking process. Now, chicken teriyaki, salmon with steamed vegetables are both brilliant options as they are very nutritious, hold a lot of the nutrients, the vegetables and meat store just through the steaming process as there's not a lot of high heat used and they also eliminate all those fats and oils. Do beware though of the hidden traps in the Japanese cuisine such as pork katsu and also fried chicken dishes as they can pack a lot of fats with the deep frying. A great way to look on the Japanese takeaway menu for foods that may be battered or fried is to try and avoid foods that state they are crunchy or crispy because usually that means they're battered and usually that means they're deep fried. And now with condiments, the Japanese cuisine is also brilliant. Go for something like edamine or soybeans, both of which are very nutritious, very filling and are very fiber rich. So they'll bring on the feeling of fullness a lot quicker. Try to avoid the Japanese drink sake, which is an alcoholic drink. I think it's made from like malted rice and that just for one serve can pack 220 calories. And if you choose that, over something like a low carb beer, which is at 100 calories, you're almost packing on another 120 calories. Now for desserts, try to avoid desserts and opt for teas or coffees because most Japanese desserts are very high in carbs, fats, or both. Hope this episode has given you all a bit of help when it comes to going with Japanese takeaway. Can all let you enjoy those takeaway options again that you might have been avoiding and go for some lower calorie options and much, much healthier. If you've enjoyed this episode, please be sure to give a like and subscribe. Also comment below if there's any more cuisines that you want me to cover. Also check out the rest of the takeaway series, which will be up on the screen up the top. And also be sure to follow me on Instagram and Snapchat at Lewis underscore eats. Thanks everyone for watching. Don't be afraid to learn, explore, and try new things. And I'll see you in my next video.